All right, so I was debating whether or not to even make a video on this because it kind of feels like um, beating a show when it's down. Like, Velma is one of the most hated things ever, like, watched by anybody on the internet. You, you know the internet. You know how much we love to hate things. Uh, but don't feel too bad for HBO. They just released Last of Us, and uh, a lot of people like that. It's pretty good. But I was saying to myself, is there anything I can really add to this that everyone else hasn't already said? Am I just going to be screaming into the echo chamber? And I thought about it. I think there are a couple things, because I'm coming at this from the point of view of someone that is a Scooby-Doo fan, but not like a die-hard fan. I haven't seen like everything Scooby-Doo, but I grew up with the cartoon, and I like the different variations we've gotten over the years. I especially like the ones that are a bit more cynical and have a little bit more of a satirical take on the characters, but it still represents the characters pretty well. And I feel like that's what Velma is trying to be, but is not doing a very good job of. And the answer is very, very clear why. Velma is falling into the trap that a lot of shows, a lot of comedy, a lot of movies, a lot of entertainment is falling into a little bit. And sometimes it's not the big a deal, but sometimes it can get in the way like with this. It's trying to be important. It's trying to save the world. It's trying to act like they have a leg up on how everything should be and you're the one falling behind and you need to catch up. And that's not very fun. Funny. It's funny if you do it kind of in a point of view where it is kind of mocking the person saying that or maybe being too pretentious and mocking that pretentiousness, but in this case, it's just being pretentious. It's just acting like it knows what should and shouldn't be made fun of and it uses all the correct language and it only makes fun of the people it feels like it's okay to make fun of. And that's not what really good, funny comedy is. Comedy is very much taking something that it may be uncomfortable in you, any kind of misery, any kind of negative emotion, and saying, yes, we get that, we see it too, and throwing it in your face and you just release this giant ha out of it, this release of that negative emotion you're carrying with you. And when you're already kind of going in with this feeling that there's things you shouldn't say, there's things you shouldn't do, there's things that absolutely we're gonna judge you if you think, it doesn't really welcome this kind of attitude or environment. And yes, that can totally go the other way. Someone can say something that's just like crazy racist, crazy mean or something like that. And it's like, this isn't, this isn't working. You know, we don't want like a, a Michael Richards stand up moment where he just cracked. And it's like, oh, that's not funny. That's just racist. So it's not something where there's an absolute to either side. It's that fun middle, that in between the extremes of being too safe and being too dangerous, where you can really find that sweet, good comedy, and that in between changes a lot. And that's fair, and it should change, it should evolve, it should morph into different things, but when somebody's trying to play too hard to one side, you get that character from Duckman. This medical caregiver of indeterminate gender says to his or her disabled, or should I say differently abled patient, why do you have a penguin on your head? They're endangered. At least when someone's trying to play it too safe. It's a character who is super PC and doesn't want to offend anyone in comedy. And I'm kind of a believer in George Carlin's mindset, which is comedy's not working unless somebody's offended. Uh, or in my point of view, it's not working unless there's some element of misery being addressed. And the more it's being focused in on, the funnier it's gonna be. It just has to really, really find that misery and expose it and bring it to the forefront. And that's when you get a real good laugh out of it, because you don't know that they're aware that they're going through a similar misery maybe you are, thinking maybe the same thing you are, and maybe you think you shouldn't think. And they bring it to the forefront and say, hey, this is human, it's okay, it's all of us. Should we sometimes be ashamed? Sure, but that's part of the comedy, that's part of the fun. And here's the element I really wanted to get to eventually. <laughs> Sorry we're rambling on here so much. What I think I can say about Velma that nobody else is saying. I think these are good writers. They're just not allowing themselves to be good. Because I think there are some very funny scenes in Velma. Not many, but there are some. Velma is selling drugs to get some money for something important. And she's going to this client, and it turns out it's her dad. 
That is very funny, especially because both of them are hugely embarrassed by it and have a lot to explain. I mean, that is very, very funny. Memories of her mother being super kind and super nice, but then when you see what it really is, it turns out she was very mean to her mother without even realizing it to a point where she's taking her eye out and abusing her and just not aware of it at all, and it's actually more likely the mother just ran away. That's very, very funny. There's some elements like that where you can tell they're not focused on, well, we can't do this joke because that's a stereotype, well, we can't do this joke because that might offend other people. They just want to be funny. And I think that is here. I get the feeling this show is very much trying to be like Harley Quinn, which also took a similar approach and does have a left lean, but it doesn't get in the way of the comedy. And in my opinion, in terms of commentary and politics and comedy, you can always have a little bit, or sometimes you can even have it very, very extreme. You just have to be interesting and or or funny, just entertaining. That's what we're here to see. And you can get commentary. Commentary is in all comedy, in my opinion. Again, it's addressing this misery that we all go through and bring it to the forefront. But if you're gonna use it in a way where you're trying to really push a narrative that's both trying to be squeaky clean and not offensive, but at the same time daring and saying something that you think nobody else is saying, you're gonna fall into the trap a lot of other people are falling into in terms of this type of comedy, which is you're actually seeing what a lot of people are saying and it's becoming boring. There's a lot of struggles that people are going through that are very tragic, but they can find the humor in it as well, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay seeing what uh, a woman is going through, a black person is going through, an Indian person is going through, and I love when they can find the comedy in that and pull it to the forefront, and you go, man, that's tragic, but it's actually kind of inspiring that they can take it and turn it into something positive, turn it into something humorous, and that doesn't feel like what this is doing. It feels like it's trying to do that, but it's too caught up in feeling important. I always feel like shows like Harley Quinn or The Boys or a lot of these other shows that have this commentary that clearly has a left lean are very close to crossing that line to being something like Velma, but they don't quite because, again, the focus is the characters that is the comedy. The characters here, a lot of people have brought up, are not only not the most likable or complex or interesting, but they're not very representative of the original characters, the original source material. Some people say the show is way too mean. I don't mind that. If anything, I want it to be mean because I'm sick of it playing so safe. And I don't mind mean humor. In my opinion, this could have been an attempt to get the James Gunn Scooby-Doo movie we never got, the R-rated one. That's one of the reasons, even though I saw the trailer for it, it wasn't blowing me away. I was like, well, there are possibilities for this because James Gunn tried to do this version of Scooby-Doo that was very, very mean. And you can see the leftovers of that mean-spiritedness in that original movie, like when they're throwing scrappy do on the side of the road. I mean, that's incredibly mean, but it's harking back to the fact that everybody hated that character, so you have to have some awareness of the character in order to know why that works. This one, it's almost like you could go in not knowing a thing about Velma or Daphne or Fred, and you would not even recognize them as Velma, Daphne, or Fred, aside from the fact that they're wearing similar clothes. Now, with that said, I can't act like every incarnation of Scooby-Doo that's doing kind of a satire of it, which is a lot of them, have gotten it right. I never got why they want Shaggy and Velma to be together in the show. To me, the love octagon is very, very clear. Clear. Velma wants Daphne, Daphne wants Fred, Fred wants Shaggy, and Shaggy has clearly given his heart to Scooby. That's what's funny about it, but for some reason they try to mix it up and have characters fall in love that I feel like don't belong together, which maybe that's playing on the comedy too, but it doesn't make me laugh. And let's be really honest with ourselves, like legit honest, this is not one of the worst shows ever made. You weren't there for Normal Ohio. You weren't there for Honey, I'm Home. You know deep down there are far worse shows. This is well animated, there are a couple of good laughs in it, but it's not good, and the reason you want to say, oh my god, this is the worst show, this is the worst piece of crap I've ever seen, is because it's following a pattern that you're getting sick of, that you feel like it's taking over. This comedy that's having a super left lean that we're seeing all over the place, and sometimes, like I said, does ruin a perfectly good show, and other times it doesn't completely ruin it, but it can get in the way. I've seen it with, like, the new Animaniacs, 
attacks where they try to push these very left-leaning lessons where before it was just about anarchy and making fun of anyone. For me, there's always a fear of getting another Black Christmas remake. <laughs> that movie's gonna be talked about for years. Like, that's the crowning achievement of a super left-leaning politics first Screw the character, <laughs> screw any writing, we're just gonna push an agenda movie. But in my opinion, it, you can incorporate politics or a lean, definitely, in something. Like I said, I think Harley Quinn has a lean and the boys have a lean, but they mix it up and they're about the comedy first. To me, it's the equivalent of seeing a pure flicks film, which if you're not aware, they do very, very Christian movies. They've done films like God's Not Dead and War Room and some really horrendous movies that I think are terrible. It's the same thing. It's too right-leaning and, and too Christian. It's laying that in the way of a good story and even a good message. But at the same time, I have seen some that are totally fine and still promote a right-leaning Christian message that's totally okay. It can be a little corny, but it's still done okay. I've totally enjoyed movies that have a very Christian lean in the past just because they're good movies. And I think the same can be said for something that has a left lean, certainly. But like those pure flicks movies, the real extreme ones, it can go too far in one direction. And I think that's what Velma is doing and everyone else has said they're doing. But in my opinion, I think the writers and the creators of it can make something good out of this. Scooby-Doo has had some great satires in the past. There's one comic book series where the reason <laughs> Scooby can talk is because he's a part of the scientifically advanced robo-dogs that are super intelligent and can speak very well, but he's actually the malfunctioning one. That's why he talks like this! So everyone's always amazed that there's a talking dog, but he's actually not that advanced. Now that's very, very funny and playing on an idea that we're all aware of. You know, a silly idea from the start. There's just this talking dog from the 60s that everyone just accepted. Oh yeah, okay, this is just how this world works. And they're taking the idea and they're having fun with it. This doesn't feel like it's taking those ideas and having fun with it. It feels like it's taking those ideas and bawling you out with it, saying you're either with us or against us. And that's not fun. That's not funny. That's not enjoyable. And we're getting a fair amount of it. Now, to be fair, I feel like there's a little bit of a, a pushback against it. When you do see something like Velma, which is, yes, hated by the internet, but it's also hated by a lot of critics too. Not as much as the typical viewer, but people seem to really like to harp on something like this. The bad side of that is that the people who make these can then see it and say they don't like that when Indian person is Velma and stuff like that. And there totally could be. I'm not saying they're not out there. I mean, good God, the past five, six years has definitely shown us there's a lot more people like that than I thought. I never care if someone is whatever, a switch gender, a switch race or something like that, because it's trying something different. I'm so sick of seeing the same thing over and over. We're just seeing the same ideas and characters and IPs, and it just gets so tiring. At the very least, change something up. If you're gonna do it, but you're not getting the person because they're the best, you're doing it just to do some pandering and say, hey, you see, we got someone that's, it makes us look more inclusive. That's not fun. So, okay, this is, yeah, me rambling a lot and stuff like that. But again, I was trying to think, is there anything new I wanted to say about this that nobody else was saying? And yes, I do think there's good writers in here. I think they can turn out a good product. I think they just have to get out of their own way. And I don't know if it was something where the writers were thinking, well, I got some good ideas, but no, I can't do that because that might be offensive. I got to change it to this. Or if maybe they had some really good ideas and producers came in and said, no, you can't do that. You have to push, you know, this narrative and stuff like that. To me, whatever the reason is, there's clearly talented people behind this and they're not letting themselves be talented. And I also really, really want to make it clear. I don't want to act like, I'm above, like, some of the mistakes these people are making. Like, I, I, I've done comedy that I felt like, oh, I want to do something a little different, or I want to do something that feels a little bit more important. We've all done it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. We all get in our little bubbles where we think we know how the world works, and we're just 
in there too much where we don't step foot out <laughs> in the real world and see how real things are going on. We all do it. I'm not acting like I'm above it. I'm saying that this is what I'm noticing. I think a lot of people are noticing and it doesn't have to be something where it's all the worst show ever made or the greatest thing ever made. You know, like Last of Us is already being called like one of the best shows ever made. And there's one episode, <laughs> which but it is very good <laughs> so far. I'm, I'm not going to bash it, but yes, it's it's one of those things where I think if you look at it objectively, you can see some value that can be pulled out of it if it can just get out of its own way. Do I think the show can be saved? As of now, I would just kind of cut it. <laughs> maybe go to something else. Uh, try to maybe reboot something else. Or here's a crazy idea. Try something new. Just a new idea. I don't want to be one of those people that's just all in on just hate it, just get angry. I mean, you can. <laughs> you can get angry at it, certainly. I mean, there's a lot of stuff you can get angry at. But don't just completely ignore the potential and the possibilities for something when you can clearly see they're there. I think a lot of people can see good animation here, one or two uh, good jokes that are trying to get out. But yes, there's this wall of protective bullshit that's stopping it from being really funny and really clever. With that said, I'd love to know what y'all think, because I'm not perfect. I'm definitely not saying, like, I've solved the puzzle or something like that. Did I even solve anything here? I don't know. I'm giving my thoughts. I'd love to know your thoughts. What do you think could save this show? Is it even possible to save it? Because, like I said, I would kind of cut the loss and uh, go on to something else. But do you agree? Do you think if they just kind of got out of their own bubble, they can make something that's legit like The Boys or Harley Quinn? Or do you think, nah, they're just too, they're too far gone, it's not worth it, there's nothing here worth saving. I'd love to know your thoughts. I just wanted to give my own two cents on a show that everybody's talking about. I don't know if I'm going to do something like this again. <laughs> I was sort of thinking about it. Um, I don't know if it's worth doing. Uh, this, is, this might be a one-off, this might be a continuing thing. I have no idea. I guess we'll just see how it goes. Uh, let me know your thoughts on it too, and I'll just see you next time. Take care.